recorder, her son on Kishta, but I'm false more a coro of Galera, Gaji on Ukaj special to shot near Revul Meach like Kayla on on sale, Francis Ledwich, a Kamora, August a Kid Philip to a Kalura. On behalf of the museum committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone here to the home place of Francis Ledwich here today. So uh, a very, very, very special warm welcome to We weren't quite sure if Joe was going to make it today, but we're delighted to uh, Joe Ledwich, nephew of the poet, is actually here with us today as well. So uh, maybe we might have a little round of applause for Joe. because he's a well, well, well. Well, Joe is 90 plus years, but you never actually kind of guess it, whatever. So we're actually delighted that he can actually join us here now today. Today's programme will be kind of a mix of kind of music and kind of poetry and uh, it is only kind of fitting that we actually kind of mark uh, the occasion here today. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the support of the art section of Mead County Council without whose support today's event couldn't actually go ahead. So uh, before we actually start the entertainment as it were I'd now like to invite Councillor Elaine McGinty to just to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank Cherry and the committee for their kind invitation to attend today and to see firsthand the issues that you're facing trying to keep uh, on top of this building, so, so to speak. In the last 18 months, we have been deprived of cultural nourishment. And I think it's vitally important that we recognise, in particular, the hardship that our arts and culture sectors continue to experience as the pandemic evolves. I can't confess to being an expert on Francis Ledwidge, but it struck me when reading about how he was called the poet of the blackbird, that while we are all rediscovering the rhythms of nature during lockdown, Francis Ledwidge was putting written expression to this a century ago. Our past is where we come from, and our work and the work you do here in keeping his memory and works alive is so important into maintaining the rich cultural fabric of our county and indeed our country. Gurmila Mahabat, enjoy the day. My Mother by Francis Ledwidge God made my mother on an April day From sorrow and the mist along the sea Lost birds and wanderers' songs and ocean spray And the moon loved her wandering jealously Beside the ocean's din she combed her hair, singing the nocturne of the passing ships, before her earthly lover found her there and kissed away the music from her lips. She came onto the hills and saw the change that brings the swallow and the geese in turns. But there was not a grief she deemed strange, for there is that in her which always mourns. Kind heart she has for all on hill or wave, whose hopes grew wings like ants to fly away. I bless the God who such a mother gave, this poor bird-headed singer of a day. Stanley Hill. In Stanley Hill the bees are loud and loud a river wild, and there, as wayward as a cloud, I was a little child. I knew not how mistrustful heart could lure with hidden wile, and wound it in a fateful part with dark and sudden guile. And yet for all I've known and seen of youth and truth reviled. On Stanley Hill, the grass is green, and I am still a child. So, a little boy in the morning. He will not come, and still I wait. He whistles at another gate, where angels listen. Ah, I know, he will not come, yet if I go, how shall I know he did not pass barefooted in the flowery grass? The moon leans on one silver horn, above the silhouettes of morn, and from their nest sills finches whistle, or stooping pluck the downy thistle. How is the morn so gay and fair, without his whistling in its air? The world is calling, I must go, how shall I know he did not pass, barefooted in the shining grass? Letter to Catherine Tynan, 20th of July, 1917. 
We have just returned from the line after an unusually long time. It was very exciting this time as we had to contend with gas, lacrimatory shells and other devices new and horrible. It will be worse soon. The camp we're in at present might be in Tirnanog. It is pitched amid such splendours. There's barley and rye just entering harvest days of gold and meadowsweet rippling. And where a little inn, named Inden Nirlu, holds its gable up to the swallows, bluebells and goldilocks swing their splendid censers. There's a wood hard by where hips glisten like little sparks. And just at the edge of it, mealy leaves sway like green fire. I anticipate beautiful moments. I dare say you have left me and are back again in the brown wilds of Connacht. I'd give a hundred pound for two days in Ireland, with nothing to do but ramble on from one delight to another. I'm entitled to a leave now, but I'm afraid there are many more before my name in the list. Special leaves are granted, and I have to finish a book for the autumn. But more particularly, I want to see again my wonderful mother and to walk by the Boyne to Crubon and up through the brown and grey rocks of Crocknaharna. You've no idea of how I suffer with this longing for the swish of the reeds at Slane and the voices I used to hear coming over the low hills of Curraboui. Say a prayer that I may get this leave and give as a condition my punctual return and sojourn till the war is over. It's midnight now and the glow worms are out. It is quiet in camp. But the far night is loud with our guns bombarding the positions we must soon fight for. Broom out the floor now and lay the fender by and plant this bee suck bough of woodbine there and let the window down. The butterfly floats in on the sunbeam and the fair tan face of June, the nomad gypsy, laughs above her widespread wares. The while she tells the farmer's fortunes in the fields and quaffs the water from the spider people wells. The hedges are all drowned in green grass seas and bobbing poppies flare like Elmo's light while siren like the pollen stained bees drone in the clover's depth and up the height the cuckoo's voice is hoarse and broke with joy and on the lowland crops the crows make raid nor fear the clappers of the farmer's boy who sleeps like drunken Noah in the shade. And loop this red rose in that hazel ring that snares your little ear. For June is short and we must joy in it and dance and sing. And from her bounty draw her rosy wort. Aye, soon the swallows will be flying south. The wind will north together in the snow. Even the rose is spilt on youth's red mouth will soon blow down the road all roses go. When I leave down this pipe, my friend, and sleep with flowers I loved apart, my song shall rise in mild, wilding things whose roots are in my heart. And here where the sweet poet sleeps, I hear the songs he left unsung, when winds are fluttering the flowers and summer bells are rung. <laughs>